Hi, welcome to lesson number five, module seven of the Big Data and Hadoop Developer course. So in this particular lesson, we will be having a look at some of the common database commands in Hive. So before we proceed with the lesson, let's have a quick recap of the previous lesson. So in the previous lesson, we have learned how Hive is different from the SQL. We understand the features of Hive query language and discuss the concepts of partitions and buckets. <clears throat> so in this particular lesson, we will be learning the Hive database commands. So once you launch your Hive shell, the first command that you should probably be aware of is the create database command. And as you can see from my demonstration, I have typed create database skill speed underscore employee semicolon. Now when you press return, you can see an OK message from Hive which says the command completed successfully. Now all the Hive command should end with a semicolon and if there is any error, it will throw an error report saying that either you have misspelled something or there is a problem with the syntax. Ideally, if your command completes successfully, you will be able to see the OK message. So this command creates a database. So now to verify whether the database has been created, I have typed in show databases command. And as you can see, along with other databases, we now have a new database called skillspeed underscore employee. Now, in order to use this particular database for our operations, the command we have to type is use followed by the database. So I have typed in use skillspeed underscore employee and it returns an OK message. So from this moment onwards, whatever I'm doing will be stored under the skillspeed underscore employee database. Now let's see how to create a table in Hive. Now the command to create a table is the create table command. And remember that when you create a table now, the table will be stored under the database which we created in the last step. So the command is create table employee name string comma salary float city string row format delimited fields terminated by comma. So this is the general structure of creating a table. Now create table command will create a table with whatever name you have mentioned. So in this example, I have given the name as employee and inside the brackets, I have given the schema that I would like to use. For example, name and the data type of name is string and salary, we have float and city as string. After that, you can see that there is a notation row format delimited fields terminated by comma. So what this means is that the input data is going to be in the form of row and the individual values are going to be comma separated. Now, if you want to have any other type of input data set uh, such as tab separated, then you should say that the delimited fields are terminated by tab or whatever is your uh, separator. So here I have typed in the command show tables, which shows me the employee table that we have created just now. The next command is the describe command. Well, the describe command will give you a short description of the table that we have created. So when I type to describe employee, you can see that it returns the name, salary and city, which are my columns along with the data type that they are being stored in. Now, the next important command is the describe extended command. Well, what, what the describe extended command does is it will show you whatever is there in the describe command along with a lot of information about the table that we have created. So I have typed in describe extended and followed by employee and you can see the schema and the individual columns that I have. But in arrow number 10, you can see a detailed table information. So you have other properties such as when it was created in create time, last access time, 
and also storage descriptor, any comments you have, and the location of the table which is on the user forward slash hive forward slash warehouse forward slash student db directory and the input format and many other information about the table. So this command is particularly useful if you want a detailed explanation about the table that you have created. So to wrap up in this particular lesson, we have learned about the Hive database commands. That's all for this lesson.